Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to today's matchup. I'm Elijah Hall here with Malachi Martin, and we are going to be witnessing the La Salette Seaside versus the Taft Seaside. And speaking of Malachi, how are you doing today? Well, I'm doing great, and the weather is great, although it is slightly overcast. Um, windy to the north, so uh, but I, I, th I think it's going to be still a great game. I'm very excited just seeing all these people in front of me, very ready to smash. Sounds good. And we also have all the eight, all the La Salette juniors and seniors and other freshmen who are not playing currently and other sophomores here on the stands cheering on the younger kids because this is developmental rugby. So these are most this is only freshmen and sophomore, mostly freshmen and some other sophomores who need to get exposure to rugby. We also have a couple of the Illinois families here, the Hayes, the Shreks, the Wilsons, all here to watch the boys play. Our very time. favorite Mr. Themen, codenamed the Demon. And for coaches, we have Mr. Hayes and Mr. Uh, sorry, Mr. Woods, also known as Captain Woods in the Marines. And Father Bevan is over there too, along with the manager Gordon Bornos and Edgar Gastelum. We're looking for a good day. We have Liam Bentz, A-side captain, line judging, on this close side of the field. And on the far side, Jack Martin. And Taft runs onto the field, getting ready for the kickoff. I got to say, even Taft is looking excited about this game. But I am very sure that our team will definitely give them nothing to laugh about in the first couple minutes. But anyways, let's see how this goes. That's, hope, that's what we hope to see here. The eight man will be kicking off for Taft as the serve sets the time. Three, two, one. Um, try that again. Three, two, one. Whistle and we are underway. Deep kick. Pretty good. Bounces right past Ezekiel Mendoza. But thankfully Trask catches it between his ankles. Breaks two. And start off with a good tackle right around the 22. Lost light inside. Ezekiel Mendoza plows through. Yeah, right off this right off the uh, start, we're seeing a lot of aggression from La Salette. Maybe not the greatest of hands, as we see with that little fumble there. But they're definitely being aggressive as they're smashing in Taft. And Taft is not doing a good job at all of spreading out. Knock on there by Lawrence Holman. His first time playing 12, I believe. 12 is the position where the... He usually gets to pass the ball, and then he usually is supposed to run straight and crash and hit hard. And Lawrence Holman can do that pretty well, as he's one of the bigger guys on this team. And immediately the eight-man pick off the scrum, won by Taft. Good tackle by Timothy Kozakowski. He goes for the ball. Some excitement down here. And Father Carlisle calls a knock on on Taft. Scrum down to La Salette. Right inside the 22 at around the 10 meter line. Well, it's unfortunate that they had to uh, suffer a knock on. It is showing a, a you know, a good, I want to say, not zest, but a good aggression, a good willingness to go for the ball no matter the cost. Although they should probably figure out how to not knock it on while doing that. And the ball's out of the ruck. Kick Richard Jolly playing number 10. I gotta say, Richard Jolly has definitely gotten a lot better since his eighth grade year when I saw him. And, you know, that, that, like, just that kick there, it wasn't exactly uh, fantastic, but it was also a lot, a lot better than anything you would have expected from him last year. And they get out to the wing. Zico Mendoza trying, pushing hard to get the poach. Almost had it there. But now there's some big fighting on the outside. La Salette trying to get, re get possession of the ball. And some good team tackles here that we are seeing. The sir calls a penalty awarded to La Salette. And Sebastian Mackin playing number nine did not quick tap the ball through the mark so he has to come back. And the call was not releasing the player who is tackled must release the ball. And 
now he kicks a touch for a line out and loss of life. For anyone who might be confused about the uh, kicking straight into the out of bounds or kicking in a touch right off a penalty, um, most of the time when you kick it into the out of bounds, with a, with a couple of exceptions, the other team gets possession of the ball. But uh, if you just received a penalty because the other team committed it, if you kick into the out of bounds, you retain possession. So it does give you a little bit of territory and it gives you a little bit of breathing room to uh, play off the ball now. While Seaside does not have too very many plays, they do have a couple in their arsenal that they can definitely pull out right about now. Indeed. Sebastian Mackin pulls the ball out of the scrum, uh, ruck, gets it to Richard Jolly, passes it to Lance Holman, who crashes. Yet again, gets to Halligan, playing at number 13. Patrick Halligan to Joseph Romero at 15. There's a little chip kick, the chase. Tap getting on there. Joseph Romero kicks it again. He kicks it again. Joseph Romero tries to retain possession. He gets tripped. But it's picked up by Dominic Trask, who runs it for the try. Now that was a play of a lifetime. Joseph Romero, the chip kick, retains the kicking right there. And Dominic Trask turns on the Rockets and scores a try. That was a very, very un uh, unexpected play, especially from the Seaside team. Looking good so far. Especially from Trouser Man. I definitely wouldn't have expected that from him, but that was definitely an excellent play. Just keep kicking it up before they can get at it. Although that is singing the ode of our better conditioning. Richard Jolly kicked just short. The wind is directly against him, so that is a hard kick to make. Is lost slip, recess position, and Taft slowly comes back out of their huddle. Lost ready for action here. The wind will prove to be a problem for this first half for Lost Select because they're going against it for any of the kicks they do if they're a high. But in the second half, we must keep in mind that it will be helping them out as they will be going the same direction as Taft is this half. And in approximately two hours, it will start raining, but thankfully the game should be over by then. And nothing will get wet and nothing will get rained on. So it should be smooth sailing. And here's the kick picked up by Timothy Kozakowski from New Jersey. There's a side step. This tackle. Lost like quick ruck. Jake Staffke clears. And the eight man thought the ball was out, but it was not. So he went to try to tackle Mackin. Now the ball is back out to the backs. We see a lot of back movement here from Lost Let. Joseph Romero tries the same play. Picks it up. Gets his own kick, kind of breaks his own ankles, but that's okay. He goes down. He went down with the ball and put did a good placement. Ezekiel Mendoza from New Mexico. Sorry, Texas. He's from Texas. As you um, can tell, he is our big man. It took two or three of them to take him down. Everything's bigger in Texas, as they always say. Actually, there's a store in Texas called H-E-B. I think that's literally what it stands for. Seriously? Yeah, I think so. Been a couple years. It's been a couple years there. I'm pretty sure it's here. Everything's bigger. Might also be Henry Edward Butt. And Mackin breaks away. Oh my god. Superman dive into the tri zone. I said this once before. What a cheeky little boy. <laughs> Just dove right in. Sebastian Mackin from Cleveland, Ohio takes a nice little cut play there. Outruns everybody and drops in for a nice little touchdown safe landing if I'm not mistaken I think Sebastian Mackin is also the captain of the team for this game he is indeed Indy Golf Niner Niner checking in safe landing and here we got Richard Jolly going for a second kick right now he is 0% 0 for 1 but now Mackin gave him a nice position right in front of the posts where hopefully he can knock some down the easy two points. It's up. 
and it floats inside, and it's good. Putting it at 50%, one, four, two. Richard Jaw is also from Texas. He just hasn't grown as big as Ezekiel Mendoza yet. He'll stretch out, just watch. He'll stretch out. But he's definitely happy about that little kick. Not very hard, but definitely enough to get the adrenaline going and get the, the happiness surge. As doesn't matter how it looks, as they always say, it just matters that it goes in. Points is points, boys. Not sure who said that, but it was definitely somebody very famous. Bet it was. Here's Sebastian Mackin. Starts out nice little slow. Boost the speed. Good tackle from the 10 from Taft. Good rucking. Ezekiel Mendoza hammering some youngins. Very good rucking, I'd say. It seems like we're doing a very good job against the physically larger other team. And Patrick Halligan breaks the tackle. Kind of tosses it out. Hospital pass there. Joseph Romero with turns on the burners with some speed. And I mean, this is just oh, this is just speed. Another day in the life of Joseph Romero. Slam dunk try zone. And that will be three tries already for Lasolette. Right off the bat. Well, if that's not a good way to start the game, I'm not sure what is. I think everybody from Lasolette's feeling pretty good about it. Just looking a little over to my right, I can see everybody pretty ecstatic, pretty happy. Speed, and I mean, this is just oh, this is just speed. Another day in the life of Joseph Romero. Barely keeping on inside their own um, 22. As soon as they got the ball, Joseph Romero did that chip kick play. Was able to get it. Yeah, it definitely says something for just getting into the groove, getting into the rhythm. Also, it's uh, mainly keeping possession of the ball. So right now, Lasla is not given... Um, Taft a chance to touch the ball at all, so Taft hasn't had a chance to do anything really. Just lost the let, catch two phases, gets to the wing, burns everybody, score. Yeah, in upper level rugby, uh, the territory is equally as important as possession. So even if you don't have the ball, but you're closer to their try zone, then that's a good thing. But in uh, this level of rugby. Oftentimes, possession is more important because defense isn't as good at getting spread out, so it'll be uh, it'll be more easy to make up the to make up the territory than it is to make up for a lost possession. Sebastian Mackin takes the ball into contact. Back out, John Shea at the other wing breaks a tackle. Gets swung down, places the ball. Good place in there from John Shea. That's where we like to see the skills and fundamentals of these guys. And Ezekiel Mendoza lays one low and turns his bones to oil beneath his living feet. Penalty awarded to La Salette. Diving into the ruck by Taft. Get it back to Mendoza. And he goes for another one. And there's an offload to Jacob Stafke. Taken down. Puts the ball down. Gives it to Richard Jolly, to Lance Holman. And they have a hard time getting him down. Good strong legs there by Lance Holman, <laughs> standing up. The defenders are literally hanging off of him. Hanging on. Joseph Romero. Oh. Oh, he tries a little stutter step. Back in the side. Oh. Chip kick. Tries that same little move. Somebody trips him over. And Taft steals it. Well, uh, the sir lets it go. And they pass it out. Hugh Dvorak pulls down a big number seven. Lasolette's line looking pretty good, advancing together. Yeah, definitely no holes. And team tackling. Right now Taft is feeding it to their fours. Looks like they're trying to use their size to break through Lasolette's line. But Lasolette's, even though they're a lot smaller, their tackle form is superb, so they have the upper hand here. Yeah, Taft isn't doing a very good job with getting deep, so they're not going to be able to get it down the hands line. But it uh, looks like they're going to kick it. Joseph Romero drops it backwards. It's definitely something that they're going to have to work on is catching a kick. He wasn't really ready there for the, the tackle. But Quinn Murray clears off the player before he could steal the ball. And they pass it back to Jolly. Kicks it. Bit off to the side. 
Thankfully for us, the number one cannot catch, and it will be a loss of line out as it bounces off his knees. Second line out of today. Now, the thing about John Shea is he usually plays a four position. Now he's playing 11. He's trying some new pants on for size. Seems like they're fitting him so far. He's done a pretty good job uh, crashing on the far side of the field, it seemed like anyways. Solid player. Good throw there. We get back to Jolly. Goes to kick it out. Puts it right in the gap. They chase. Like a swarm of bees, they follow the ball. And Taft has an advantage. I think the tackler was off sides. In order to be on sides and be allowed to tackle, you have to be behind the kicker. And Jake Safke, I don't think, was behind the kicker. All right, they opt for a back 10 penalty instead of a scrum. And uh, looks like they're calling a little powwow with the sir. Sir, describing some things that they can do, probably. Gave them some options. They're going for offside penalty. The ball will be placed at the Sir's mark. And Taft has a chance and a go at it. Mendoza. Oh, no matter how hard you try, you don't get past him. An eight man goes in, good ta double team tackle there. Hugh Dvorak gets in on the kill. Good goal line defense here from the seaside. And Mendoza tackles him out of bounds before he can score the try. Good clutch play there by Ezekiel Mendoza. And that's will be hard for La Salette. This will be hard for La Salette to get the ball out of their 22 because it is so close to their try zone it is a dangerous position to be in. Yeah, they're definitely going to try to kick it out. Sir. So the team, both teams have to be at the five meters, five meters out and they were too close so the Sir moves them back. And the throw. Set for there, Lance Holman kicks. Gets in the touch. That was unfortunate. Lawrence Holman is probably the best kicker on that team. Looks like he went up the side of his boot a little. But they'll be playing the knock on in the line out, so it'll be a loss of that scrum. Looks like the jumper for Taft to tipped it. He tipped it forward. So the server will take it back to the scrum. Yeah, the line out for Taft seemed a little bit lopsided. Their uh, their lifters and their jumpers were not uh, definitely not proportional. The lifter looked a little bit bigger than the uh, jumper, but only by a little bit. So it was very hard to get him off the ground. Unsafe scrum. The sir calls it up. And they're back down. Now on this seaside level, scrums are very important, especially good form scrums. Because they're learning how to do them for the when they get bigger and older. Lawrence Holman, another kick. Too much shallow. Mendoza, another good force play. Now also is back into their line and defense. Richard Jolly, good tackle. Now they're crashing with their forwards again, trying to get some ground. Right now they're at the five meter line, about five meters in front of the try zone. And Jake Stafke comes away with the ball. That's, that's good defense right there, being able to strip it away from the other team. Jolly goes for the kick again. Oh! The 
There's a miscalculation by the linesman. He thought the ball didn't go out of bounds at that point. Sir calls it back. Right outside the 22, though, so better position to be in for La Salette. And Taft will have their line out. Yeah, once again, it just gives them just a little bit of breathing room. Substitution in for Taft. Number 19 comes in for number 14. Line out is good for Taft. Pass it out to the back line. He's not ready, really. And Tim Kozakowski pulls it down by the seat of his trousers. Good play there. Jake Stafke and others. Yeah, Tim and Jake have definitely been defying all expectations of their performances. While Hugh Dvorak, as always, is acting like a little gorilla on the field. Look at that tackle. The that tackle, oh my goodness. Quinn Murray and Hugh Dvorak just threw him forward. And the tad players came up after that like, oh my goodness, that was, that hurt. Pass out to no one, or 19. Dominic Trask, plays on low. Zika Mendoza, good, smart, trying to get out. Now Mendoza just throws him out of bounds, as one does. Mendoza, as though, has been insanely exceptional today with his tackles, just manhandling them, no matter what their size, stature, performance, what they look like, it doesn't matter. Mendoza is going to throw you down and make sure that you pay for ever touching the ball, his ball. But regardless, he still has a heart of gold, always shaking the other person's hand, never rubbing it in that they've just been turned into a smear on the field. Line out was not straight, so the serve will call a scrum for Taft. Right below us, we have some A-side players, Henry Dittman, Titan Esparza, and Saula Cruz having a good time with the little Shrek children. They're the best babysitters in our class, I would say. Wouldn't you say so? Well, yeah, I'd definitely say so. As long as the uh, person that they're babysitting doesn't get thrown into the lake. Just kidding, but yeah, no, they're <laughs> awesome. Usually the kids that they babysit, though, are, well, of the tougher sort. In any case, here's Tim Kazakowski, another good tackle. Just utterly vicious, relentless. Yeah, I'm not sure how that happened. It looks like there was a flanker pick. B7 peeled off the scrum, took the ball, and went for it. And the ball was knocked forward. Scrum to La Salette. Good team tackle there. Leading up to that by Isaac Shrek and Richard Jolly. Crouch, bind, set, calls up. Nine puts it in. Osselet will win the scrum, balls out to the backs. All the way out, can they get all the way out? Gives it to Joe Rowe, cuts inside. The kick down the field. Picked up by their 19, Joseph Romero catching up and pulls him down by the back of his jersey. Good play right inside their 22. Taft desperately flailing to get the ball out of there. And they just send it backwards. Deep into their own territory. The kick. That is definitely a pretty good kick for a seaside player. He must be playing soccer or something in his free time. Now here's the chase. Back in. Just cuts inside. Sends out to Joseph Romero. Another chip kick. Fighting for the ball, can't really get it. Other guy has superior size. And a good tackle. And another good tackle there by Ezekiel Mendoza. So we like to see. That was a bit of a breakaway there, the football player. Tim Kazakowski <laughs> alone. Tim does oh, it down. Tim takes him down Tim where nobody Kazakowski. else could. What a play. That was a clutch play right there. That could have been a game. And mate and whoever that is. Number four. 
takes him down into out of bounds territory. It'll be a loss of the lineup. We'll see if Josh Hagan throw another straight one. John Stafke is number four. He's the one to tackle him out of bounds. And there will be a scrum at the penalty of the line out. Our rugby pitches are also being graced right now by four French students who have come to La Salette to learn American English. American English, not English English. Instead of saying you all, we say y'all. Instead of saying no, no, call it don't. vacation holiday, we say vacation. Just different little things that Americans say that British don't say. And we say bag. No, that's only the Minnesotans. And people from St. Mary's, Idaho, like Mr. Reed. But now we got some more smashing going on. John Shea having some fun, doing some forward work, just clearing people off. And he throws it through the legs of a big one. Gets it right around. Tackled down by Hugh Dvorak. And Timothy Kozakowski helps out around there. Nobody there to ruck over. And number five, Benjamin Simmons. Let's one fall on him. Penalty to Taft. Smashing into the ruck. No, oh, probably diving in. I think it's that. Well, it might be smashing in, but I'm pretty sure it's diving in. Dangerously smashing in with such force and speed. In any case, they're back inside right around the five meter line. Lasala has to play some goal line defense here to not allow Taft to score. Right around the outside. Pulls him down. Yeah, it looks like Taft is getting a bit of a second wind as the wind itself picks up. They're sending a little bit more velocity into our defensive line. Seems like they're getting through just a little bit more than they used to be. Now they get to the lane. There's Trask. Trying to get the ball from him. Mendoza. Just pulls him back about two or three or four or five or six meters. The lost light, there you go again. They got to push back. Taft, Taft is very close. Also, I think you get that pushing him back. But Taft finally gets to try. Now, at that one point when there was that ruck formed, well, I wouldn't really call it a ruck, there was just a Taft player standing over. Lasselet would have been allowed to just smear the schnikes out of him and steal the ball, but because probably they are very Christian-like, they did not do that because that just would have been mean. Mendoza could have probably went in and picked him up and walked him out of there, but it's too bad. Now trousers of the other team will kick. Yeah, I mean, a uh, try from the other team is definitely a wake-up call for the Seaside, that perhaps they're not the demigods that they thought that they were, and they'll actually have to uh, play, l play defense a little bit harder and uh, take a couple more hits than they're used to, perhaps. I would say a little bit smarter, too. I think they've been just... I think their counter-rucking has been a bit on the downside, and also their defense has to, has to be more of a, well... I don't really. I wouldn't really say like a more aggressive because they are definitely more aggressive than a lot of teams we see. I think it's just mostly that they need to focus on pushing back more active tackles because passive tackles will not get you anywhere if you're trying to defend in a try zone. Yeah, it's definitely definitely a big big issue when the other team has a couple couple pounds on you per guy. Now it's a nice drop kick 
nobody really wants the ball, and I don't blame them. Number 23, probably the best player on Taft. Basketball pass, hook shot. Isaac Shrek, nice little smash tackle there. Jake Stafke, well that's Quinn Murray, lays one low, looks at him on the ground. Also trying to counter work again. Get to the backs. And there's a kick attempted. John Shea gets a hold of it. Breaks one ankle on the sideline. Down he goes. Nobody's there. Number 10, though. Tackled right in front of the try zone. Oh, that looked like an ouchie boo boo kind of tackle. But that was a good, good idea. Good, good, smart play there by John Shea going on the outside. And the ball was knocked on right in front of the try zone. Scrum to Taft. Could almost hear the crunch. But Shea definitely, definitely brought the cat out of the bag. Definitely took a little, little bit of run. Went for the try and then was just barely stopped. It definitely gave Los Celeste much more possession. Isn't cat out of the bad bag basically saying that you're giving a secret away? Yeah, he gave out the secret that he can actually run. Oh. See, I didn't okay. actually know that beforehand. He didn't actually know that beforehand. Well, obviously he did. Or else he wouldn't have run. And let's say out of bounds, a tackle. And there'll be a, a line out to Los Salette. Right around the five meter line. All they have to do is get the ball out and yoink themselves in there. The La Salette fans, aka the boys, are playing King of the Stands. See so you can stay up there the longest, trying to get the best view. Line out, thrown in, it's good, but stolen. And the wing goes down the sideline. Donut Trask goes to head him off at the pass. Joseph Romero with crazy speed. Oh, that oh, was a that was a high tackle. That was a dangerous looking tackle. And the sir calls penalty uh, advantage. That was a man tackle. Ruthless, Dominic Trask. The audience is howling with outrage at such a play. But Dominic Trask, definitely aggression there. I don't know, maybe there was something a bit had a beef between those two. But he definitely brought him down. As long as he doesn't get a yellow card, that's all that matters. And that, of course, that the other guy isn't hurt. But it looks like he's fine. So now Taft is back out to the backs again. Football player. It's tackled. Almost tipped by Joe, uh, Trask. Cuts back inside. Everyone's trying to avoid Trask now. And I don't blame him. And they're back at the high tackle penalty. See, well, you might be thinking, oh, well, they just get a penalty. We can stop them. We've done it before. You also have to uh, contend with the memory of the ref. Now, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, the actual high tackle happened quite a bit of meters uh, before the mark that the uh, Surgis made. So that's another penalty that the, uh, the, lo the Lions will have to deal with. Oh, stolen. Patrick Halligan. Lost that quick ruck over. Yet again, Oslet pulls ahead using their, oh wait, but it's stolen again. Tim Gazakowski, De Profundis, tackle, and not releasing, penalty goes to Lasolet. Mendoza. Mendoza. Bang, he did Gosh, play soccer dang. too. And the tap guy drops it. Forward. That might have might have been a knock on. Doesn't look backwards. like. We'll see what the sir says. It looks like looks he's like giving it to him. him yeah. Mendoza. 
sits down with the guy on his lap, pulls him down on his lap. And looks like there's some monkey business going on. So there will be a scrum to La Salette. Probably a knock on, I would assume. Let me go for the call. Oh, we are shoved way back. Quentin Murray breaks a tackle. Football player takes him down. Push off to the side. Mendoza. Oh, man, that looks like it was painful. And he's still going. And he's still going. And he's still going. And he's finally brought to the earth. That's the big boy that, we all know that's and love. A, that's, that's the big man we all know and love indeed. And if you're wondering why we're calling number 23 on tap the football player, it's because when they were running out, they went, he was yelling at his team, I wish I was playing football right now. So that's why we're calling him the football player, if you're just wondering. But there's a knock on there from a ta tackle I tapped. And Lance Holt couldn't really hold out to the ball. Couple subs for Taft are going back onto the field. And there's some yip yap yitter doodle going on over there. This is chit-chatting. And hopefully both teams are having a good time. Yeah, nobody is killing the other person, so it's definitely a lot more fun than an absolute stomp out. And the weather is actually quite nice right now, although a little bit windy it is. It is pretty warm. So there's an offload there, but it was knocked on by the person who was receiving the ball. Lost a wet scrum. Yet another scrum. It seems like Taft's offense is kind of uncoordinated. They don't know who to pass to, and they're never really ready for the passes. When in La Salette, they are all ready. It seems like La Salette has more form than the Taft does. I think Taft is just willy-nilly winging it, just trying to do what they can do. There's a bit of a tackle there. A bit of a tackle, though. Isaac Shrek, right past the 50. Brings it down. Two. Here's Richard Jolly. Passes it out. Lance Holman drops it yet again. Now, if they got it out to Trask, that would have been a try, probably, most likely. But now they assert calls halftime. So both teams will go to their benches for a well-deserved rest. All right. It's been a pretty exciting first half with couple tries, a couple kicks, a couple missed kicks, and a lot of awesome tackling. Anyway, see you in a few minutes.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to this beautiful matchup between Lost Let Seaside and the Taft Seaside. We're back with Malachi Martin, and I'm Elijah Hall. And we Lost Let is up by two tries coming into the second half and is now with the wind on this cloudy day. Yeah, a little bit cloudy, but still warm. I don't know how. We're supposed to get rainy. It usually gets, it gets colder before that, but uh, it stayed nice so far. Anyways, it's been very exciting with some good tries by La Salette, some uh, iffy tackles, and some, uh, you know, plain funny tackles. But anyways, kickoff. Oh. Right to the front. Solid tackle by Hugh Dvorak. Nathan Wiener's in, number 18. And here's Richard Jolly going to tackle out of bounds, and he does. Good play. Substitutions for La Salette. Benedict Zimborski, number 19. Michael Schrader, number 23, and Christopher Corner playing fullback. And we have Sebastian Mackin throwing in the ball for some reason or other. But we'll see how he does. I don't know if he's a thrower. But he could do it. Nah, I'm sure he can. Anyways, Anthony Lillis is jumping. Get a little bit extra height and he gets oh, it. what a throw! And here's Mackin back inside. Passes it out to Jolly. Jolly is kind of tackled there. But he took it well. Now they're back up to the back. Here's Halligan. Passes that to Christopher Corner. Christopher Corner gets to Michael Schrader. Terry is tackled. Bendix and Borski, a strong ruck. Richard <laughs> Jolly exploits the gap. Gets past the 50 offload to Lawrence Holman. Now lost that. Creeps their way past the 50. Is out. And here is Jake Stafke. Takes it nice and strong. Good placement. Good rucking by La Salette. Dropped backwards by by Pat Halligan. Oh, Wiener breaking some ankles. That's some good stuff there from Thomas Wiener. And a good Ooh. kick there by Patrick Halligan to bring it back. Hugh Dvorak takes it with a little bit of sauce into the defensive line. He's really laying it on thick. That's how he rolls. Back to Richard Jolly. And then back into the backs again. Here's Christopher Corner. Cuts inside. Breaks one ankle. Breaks two. Breaks three. Breaks four. Gets tackled. Quick rucking by La Salette. Nice and low. Quinn Murray, eight man. Spin move, dodges a tackle and breaks another. Like it's kind of down right above in front of the 40. Hosslet slowly making their way. We, uh, Richard Jolly passes it back. Picked up by Lawrence Holman. But he breaks two tackles from a standstill. Cuts back his side, breaks three, breaks four, breaks five. It's almost like they're trying to miss him. Finally, a big bear hug to take him down. So you just got to show him a little bit of love and he breaks down. And Jake Stafke takes it into, kind of drops it out. Good, quick thinking there by Anthony Lillis. Quentin Murray, eight man, takes it in. Good hard hit. We're seeing surprisingly good passing for RSC side this game. Usually there's quite a few uh, bad pass. I mean, we've seen a couple of mistakes, maybe a little bit too low. Not quite on target, but so far they've been pretty good. Good spiral, good uh, good speed, easy enough to catch, but then also fast enough that the other team won't just nab it out of the air. So it, it's been uh, pretty good all around. And the ball was kind of being bobbled around inside that rock there, but it was clarified. Now there's some speeding around going on on the outside wing area at around 15 meters. Benix and Borski. Bang, bang, boom, boom, bang, smash, clash, and he's finally brought down. Zimborski is another one of our big boys. You do not want to get hit by him. He will put the pain on you. Christopher Corner turns on the burners. And knocks it on in the try zone. The loss had advantage. That was a really good run, though. That was almost a pretty savage play there by Lost Let's Seaside and Christopher Corner. Jake Stafke. 
Now that was kind of funny because Jake Safke had nobody there who was going to tackle him. He just ran forward and fell right into the try zone. That's Jake Stafke in a nutshell for you. No ostentation, just flops right down where he needs to be. I'm just going on a stroll and then try, just like that. Jake Stafke. Now that was kind of funny because Jake Stafke had no. And the Los Les students are chanting that they want Joseph Janice on the field, number 21, native of Indiana. Now, Joseph Janice is a very famous personage at La Salette. He's well-known all over. He is also known for his arguing, so we definitely want to see what he can do on the rugby pitch. Yeah. Also going back to set up. There were some grass fights going on earlier today with Henry Dittman and Titan Esparza, solid crews. They were all they're all fighting with all the little hazes and the little uh, Shreks and a Lanthier or two. As we can still see, Joseph Lanthier still has a handful of grass ready to throw. Laying in wait to ambush some poor child. But before, Marcella Fev, varsity wing, was practicing along with Joseph Lanthier, helping him out with some skills as we were watching before during halftime and such. I'm pretty sure Lanthier was helping him with skills, but uh, we can skip past <laughs> that one. And Lanthier hits his target, Solid Cruz goes down. Here's the kickoff. Bounce. Hugh Dvorak wanted that ball, and he just pushes the guy's stomach and is like, no, go away from me. Football player, jumping around, trying to do something athletic. Failed. Richard Jolly. To Lance, crash, swing, fall. And back to this lost let, insane rucking. Well, quick, now they have to get out to the wing. All the way out, Christopher Corner offloads there to Thomas Wiener. And good support. To the backs again, Ho Lawrence Holman. Also hasn't really gained any ground yet. But now to get to Zimborski, kind of drops it forward. Advantage is given to Taft. Yeah, it's kind of a, not very, the pass is just got to be rare for them. Sometimes it'll slip out, especially when you're beginning. Your hands will be shaking a bit more when you're start, first start, just starting to play. Yeah, well, until you get into the rhythm and you just kind of like catch it and pass it and catch it and pass it, you know, th these things happen. His arms are a little bit low when he tried to catch the ball, so they did uh, just popped right out. Uh, tackle another big boy. He goes down. Helped out by Ben Zimborski. Good hard hit there by Ben Simmons. Brother of the Kenneth Simmons of the same number for La Salette. Both are number five locks. Make a little bit of meterage before he's finally brought down. They're getting very, very close to their try zone. Tackle Anthony Lillis, number 19, from St. Louis, Missouri. Yeah, defense is going to have to start picking it up. And a penalty will be awarded to La Salette. There is a yellow card. Given to Isaac Shrek. Seems like La Salette will go back 10. There was a yellow card there. Isaac Shrek. I think it was for a high tackle. Sometimes when the ref sees too many high tackles. Well, Shrek's t high tackle wasn't too horrible or anything. He just happened to be at the end of a very long line of them, so he's the one that happened to be the fall guy. That's some good defensive right now. S pushing it out. out of bounds. Good team defense. Quinn helped out by others. That's teamwork right there. And teamwork makes the dream work, as a wise person once said. 
as uh, also another wise person once said, some people are wrong. But in this case, we are not wrong. Now, we'll see Sebastian Mack in the second line out. Right now, he's one for one, 100 per cents, in case you can't do math like me. Except I was able to do that. But it was stolen. The football player oh. drops the ball. Now there's some big things going on here, and I mean big things. Ben Simmons brings down one of those big things. Passed out. Now one more pass, and he could be gone. Sets back. Halligan can't get a hold of him. Places the ball in the hardest place to kick the ball from. Taft hasn't been using their, their hands or their back line too very much this game, so... We, uh, Los Lutz just gotten kind of used to all the forwards just staying in the same spot and just trying to smash and get a little bit of get a little bit of meterage. So weren't quite prepared for that uh, little flat pass out and then zip in for a try. Score twenty two to twelve. It is now Taft's turn to suffer with the wind against them as they try to kick a try. Conversion, excuse me. A very hard place to kick from, too. According to our trusty sheet, it's a 48% kick for the professionals. But here... It is a very low percentage for a seaside kicker, and they make it. And now the crowd gets what they want. Joseph Janice comes into the field, comes into play. Scrub putting on his scrum cap. And the sir digs in his pocket. So they're going to go back. It was a pretty vicious block by number 12. Will the give one? He might. Might give a yellow card. And yes, the Sir is enjoying his career today and giving yellow cards. And the playing field is leveled. 14 on 14. Big things going on right now, big things. And Joseph Romero, a.k.a. Trousers in certain urban areas, comes back onto the city field. Summing it for Richard Jolly. Now, I don't know if Romero will play 10. If he does, it might be a disaster. And the world might end. But as long as he's on the wing, he should be good. He uses chip kick powers and spaceman powers and speeding around. Joseph Denise, running in the back, playing 15. Balls out, Joseph Romero, Halligan, good catch. Gets it to Wiener, Wiener has his time to shine. Offloads it to corner, and corner gets the try. La Salette fans go crazy. Salah Cruz throws grass into the air and raindrops are fell in the sky as Christopher Corner drops in for a local two, three, no, five points. Now that's true, true team teamwork right there. Wiener could have tried to just keep the ball and been forced out and try to go for the try himself, but instead he gets rid of it and gives it to a teammate so that they'll get the glory, but the team gets the win. Offloads it to Corner, and Corner gets the try. La Salette fans go crazy. Salah Cruz throws grass into the air and raindrops. Now the wind technically is kind of against him right now. Directly against him because the wind changed again. Holman gets up some speed. Not quite high enough. It's a bit short.
valiant effort nonetheless. A Craig is spread on freaking full attempt. But Mr. Thiemann, our veritable Latin monster, goes crazy with excitement anyways. He's definitely showing his Lost Let Frost Soft side team spirit. And talking to Mr. Kopliku. Indeed. Anyways, Lost Let's set up very quickly for receiving. Demoralizing the TAF players, and now they're walking up very slowly. You know, speaking of Mr. Thiemann, I just sat in on his Latin class this morning, and i got to say, I don't think I've ever heard anybody that can speak Latin so quickly and uh, fluently. fluently as I had quite a hard time keeping up with him, and I am two Latin uh, grades above what he's teaching, so I was quite impressed. Ball didn't go 10 meters, so it'll be a re-kick. Lost slit sides, and it should be a re-kick. Oh, no, they don't. They're calling a scrum. All the forwards gather in. And here we have Joseph Conti subbing in as Hooker. I like the accent. And Javen Yamas comes also into the play of Fields, subbing in there for Patrick Halligan. He's playing wing. Joseph Romero is playing 10. Quinn Murray takes the run. Balls himself. Castro breaks the tackles like it's going out Three, of style. Four, five. Oh, and they trip over each other. Quinn Murray goes for a coast to coast. Now they ruck over there. Down at the sideline. Quinn Murray with a very exceptional run. Here's Zimborski. Close. To Joe Rowe. Joe Rowe goes for himself. Offloads it. Lawrence Holman drops it. It's knocked forward. Very hard offload from Joe Rowe. Bounces off Holman's chest. This reminds me of a time <sighs> when I was playing basketball at Westville. He killed the rhythm, man. He killed it. Back at Westville when John Barton went to save a ball right into me. And he jammed my finger because he threw it. A million miles an hour, and I was only two feet away. But those things happen. The adrenaline gets rushing, and you're just like, you gotta get, just like, let the ball go, and they can, like, you know, make the try, and then it just bounces off of them, and it's, yeah. This very Anyways. sad sauce. Scrum, they pass it out. Scrum right on their try line. It's not that bad. Deep kick. Especially not with Chris Corner to field the ball. Thankfully, Chris Corner got some speed, and he is put on his knees quite literally. Joseph Trini is helping out with the ruck. Very good form there. Conti. Lost that with some good rocking again. Joseph Romero puts off the kick. Oh my goodness, that man can run. Joseph Romero scores the try. Joseph Romero with the slide tackle kick thing. Oh, puts it down. Joseph Romero with the try. What's a play from this sophomore from Arcadia, California? Now, I'm not sure where he's pulling these wonker doodle plays out of, but uh, they're definitely helping, and I hope that he's got plenty more in stock because they have definitely been very entertaining to watch. He's been watching too much of highlights from different rugby games, from professional matches. If... That skill is simply from watching highlights. I think that we should definitely post him in front of a computer and just have him watch YouTube all day. I'm sure he'd love that. <laughs> but now Lost Let's just crushing 32 to 12. Sebastian Mackin going for the kick. Kind of a hard kick there. An attempted catch from our manager, Jack Martin, as Malachi Martin, his brother, laughs and covers the mic. A courageous but unfruitful attempt. That was about a 43% kick for a professional kicker. But it's hard.
the sir. Signals. The yellow card can go back on the field now. And suddenly the turntables start turning back into our favor. We're now 15 versus 14. We'll see how that one extra person does to our team chemistry. Thomas Wiener breaks the tackle, comes around, Isaac Shrek rocks over with multiple others. Joseph Denise immediately runs away from the ball as far as he can. I don't know if coach told him to do that. There's offload. Ball is stolen. The sir blows the whistle. Yeah, it looks suspiciously like getting uh, your paws into the ruck. Get your dirty paws off. That's what people would say. But of course, we wouldn't say that. Anyways, Borski brings it low into contact. Nobody even tackles him. Simply smashes through. Joseph Romero back at 10 to Holman. Because that's a Wiener. Wiener passes it out to Javen. Javen does a hop step inside. Breaks the tackle, breaks another. That's a small man who breaks the tackles. Offloads. Lance Holman's there to pick it up. Wasslet's doing a great job with not passing the ball until they've forced a defender to commit to them. Joseph Romero, another kick. Kind of got tackled there. Anthony Lillis takes him down. With good help there from Michael Schrader. Now Taft goes for the kick. It's pretty deep. Corner wasn't quite ready for that. I hope Chris can kick. Oh, nope, he gives it to Yamas. Gives it to Javen. Yamas cuts back, cuts back in. Breaks another tackle, breaks another tackle. He's just too quick for these guys. Who are too not quick is the Isaac Shrek. Burning down the sideline. Turns on the Hezzy. Breaks a tackle. Isaac Shrek, Number holy 11 cow. Number down, good run. Michael Schrader, that is his support. Can they keep the ball? Yes, they do. Back out, Quinn Murray. Breaks inside. Right around the five meter line. The far side of the field. So goes Joseph Romero, breaks in, and hammers down another try. Now, I have not seen such speed on the field. And Joseph Romero has an explaining today. He just kicks the ball, outruns every the far side of the field. So goes Joseph Romero, breaks in, easy. Yeah, once again, that's one thing that we've got on every team is the conditioning. All of our guys can outrun e every single one of their guys. Well, almost every one of their guys. I don't know, maybe some of our big guys couldn't, like Zamborski or Mendoza. Oh, no. they got strength on their side, definitely. They've got the strength. I mean, maybe they're not going to run as fast for, like, you know, a sprint, but they can they definitely can run, run long, longer. Long time. Way longer. Definitely great conditioning program here. As Lance Holman gets a nice easy kick right down the center. Puts it right through the uprights. Easy peasy. The sir checks his watch. It's Gordon Bordos. Carries the waters back off the field. And Edgar Gasellan brings back the tee and water from the kicker. Quinn Murray smiling as the fans cheer him on. Slowly, ever so slowly, slow as molasses. They're taking their time, perhaps brewing up a special spicy play. I don't know about that. Maybe it's because they just need some rest. It might be that too. But you know what? I was taught to always think the best. That's right. Never attribute anything to stupidity that you can to maliciousness, at least in rugby. Seb Mackin kicks off, and here's the chase. 
Macken hangs on. <laughs> Piggy Mac. The Piggy Mac ride takes him down. He's not called the Spider Monkey for nothing. Source of athleticism right there. The sir is utterly confused. Should he call it a high tackle? No. He calls diving in. No, no. Sides. His hands were definitely around his shoulders. That was quite quite yeah. hilarious. There's nothing that says that you can't put your legs get <laughs> around the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> Now they're charging back in. Tackled down. <laughs> Quinn Murray in a shoulder battle with number one. But everyone just pushes him aside. Doesn't want to put in the extra work. Downfield. Right around the 50. T Richard Jolly back in the race with a tackle. Strong counter up from La Salette. Can't really get it. Crowd cheering on Jesse Denise. And here's Quinn Murray, another savage move. Jesse Denise can't really hang on there. But even if he did, it might have been a high tackle. But he's brought down by his teammate, Anthony Lillis. And Lillis comes in for a second one in a row. And he gets two. Jay Stafke trying to get the counter ruck. Well, so needs to get in their line. And the fake pass, I love it. How they throw it to the guy he purposely misses. But now they get him on the outside. Tackled down by anonymous human being. Number 10 takes it in. Pop pass out to somebody who doesn't, who ceases, the ball just ceases to exist in his hands. Unfortunately, there was a knock-on on task, so it'll be our scrum. It'll stop the excitement for just a couple of seconds before Lasolette can restart it. Excitement indeed. You were laughing like a little monkey with your headset off. No comment. <laughs> That's okay. There's a lot of laughing that goes on up here. Some things happen that just like sitting on a banana peel, you know. Solo Cruz, B-side nine, offering encouragement, does something amazingly athletic on the, the stands. Quinn Murray, pulls something off the center, then I can't really see what. Lawson retains possession of the ball. The sir calls penalty for Lawson Kicks it into touch. Mr. Lanthia goes into the fields to get the ball. Liam Bentz counts out 10 meters. If you want the full name, it is Liam, Liam Ernst Bentz. Bentz. Line out. Stolen there. Number seven. Pulls it down. And now La Salette pulling back around, but it can't really get it down. Trying to get the pooch. Tad, back 10 again. Penalty for La Salette. About seven minutes left here in the game. And here comes Zimborski. Good hit. Nice and low. Sebastian Mackin brings it back out. Gets it to the backs. Lance Holman. Kind of grabbed under by the leg. Teammates help bring him back down. A safe landing. Oh, knock on. Ball's knocked on. Advantage to Taft. Right around in front of the 50. Moving forward, big man brings it down. Pass to anonymous person. Number 21 breaks the line. Can Chris Corner catch up? Ah, and a try. Javen should have tried to dive, go for the ankle tap, but uh, he tried to go for the shoulders. 
And he let another try go through his slim fingers. It was worth a try. Quite literally. Not funny. <laughs> I didn't I didn't really mean to do that actually. It was an accident. I meant to say what worth a shot. JC, also known as John Corner, brings out the stuff. <laughs> Set up for a kick. Decently easy kick. Eight man. And technically, you are not so allowed to put the ball back on after you start running towards it. But this is seaside, and the sir doesn't really care. Gives him a break, a beautiful kick down right the center. Now the eight-man runs back. Lost let charge it back down the field. Nobody's really ready, but Sebastian Mackin says start anyway. Kick. Caught by number 21. The same guy who scored the try. Turns on the speed. Miss. Oh, he sinks almost into his crouch pats him and brings him down. Michael Schrader. Mendoza gets his body in there. Oh, Passing a good offload to nobody. Bounces off the field. Tackle there. Richard Jolly. Seems like everything's going downhill. <laughs> More tackles here. It looks like Elijah Hall's back on. And here we go. There's a tackle going on out here. Need some more tackles. John Shea back in the game. Yep, that was a textbook knock on. Will be a scrum for La Salette. And it looks like we have uh, the Sir allowed rolling subs, which means subs are allowed to come in kind of like basketball. You have to let the ref know, and they can come in at any dead ball. In some places, sometimes, it'll be only you can only have six subs a game, and if one sub comes out, he cannot go back in. Lasselet, good scrum. Ball comes out the back. Sebastian Mackin exploits no defense. Finds a hole, cuts inside, chased down by a big number 12. But he cuts inside again, cuts finally is taken down. His team is there to help. Schrader, Michael Schrader. Tackled into touch. Penalty, high tackle. Forward to La Salette. Yeah, once again, it looks like Los Let's found the rhythm, and they're sending themselves, marching down the field again. Another forward crash. Ooh, Mendoza with a little bit of acrobatics. It's a deep pass. Down there, here's John Shea. He comes around, breaks the tackle, breaks another tackle, turns it towards the end with his speed. Can he make it? John Shea gets a try. Solo Cruz tells the crowd to get loud. What a play by John Shea. His career is a ring. Just as he's about to be absolutely smashed by the other team, he touches it down and gets smashed anyways. And that's a man. That, that takes a real man to do that. Turns it towards the end. With his speed, can he make it? John Shea. While it was an amazing try, it is going to be a very difficult kick for Richard Jolly to make. Difficult kick indeed. So we'll cross all 12 of our fingers. <laughs> Excuse me, my information was wrong. We each only have 10 fingers. Malachi has 12. He was just trying to correct us <laughs> in the, the normal standard. <laughs> All right, Richard Jolly. Says right on the line. It's going to be a difficult kick. 
mentally mentally tough kick. Now I can't really get any much air on that. Bounces right in front. Yeah, it's hard at, at this uh, stage of development to get a good kick from there, so nothing against Jolly. Well, now here's Trask, uh, not Trask, here is Taft. Gets the front, Anthony Lewis doesn't really have anything on there. So number 10 can't tackle him because it goes backwards. No, the circle is a knock on. Nick will beat up scrum down to Taft, the Eagles, as they are known as. Seems like sometimes with the really short passes, we can't quite get a finger on the ball, whereas with the deep passes, like the one that we saw right before John Che's awesome try, he was uh, some pretty good hands, so I think that if we just keep our eyes on the ball instead of always expecting the glory plays, then we'll we'll do a lot better without so many knock-ons and scrums. Indeed, sir. Ball's out of scrum. They get to the backs. Well, they attempt to get to the backs. Knock on, and that is game. Also with a stunning victory of 44 to 19, absolutely crushing. Joseph Romero definitely has to be the MVP. At least he's the flashiest guy. Yeah, I mean, we've definitely had some pretty awesome offense by both sides. The other team had a couple of good breakaways, a couple of good scores. And, of course, we had our own awesome breakaways and pretty good scores. So uh, definitely round of applause to John Shea. Tim Kozakowski really coming out of the woodwork. I mean, where did the heck did he come from? Then, obviously, our big boys, Zeke Mendoza and Zimborski, definitely deserve a lot. Well, anyways, thanks for uh, sticking around watching the game, and we'll see you in a week.